Hi everyone, good morning. Today is 7th of November and let's start with the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion for today. Guys, in this particular video, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. We'll take all the articles along with the background and way forward. And I would also like to tell you that you can download the explainer notes of this particular session from Telegram channel. Link for Telegram is given in the description box in YouTube. Okay, so here you will find notes of all articles along with the background and relevant information that is needed. Okay, so let's start with the discussion. First of all, we'll take overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually relevant in the today's newspaper. Okay, so let's take the overview. Now guys, here we have Delhi edition of Hindu newspaper. Now first article that we have, Governor delaying a crucial bill, a matter of concern, says Supreme Court. We'll take this particular article for the examination. Aftershocks rocks Nepal and Delhi. So recently, the aftershock tremors was experienced in Delhi and the regions of Nepal. Okay, additional frisking of Air India passengers. Now for examination, no need to go too much in detail in this particular line. Then guys, we have these advertisements, etc. Okay, and then in city section, the regional issues, the tenders, pollution, etc. Such things have been provided. Now guys, for examination, nothing much important for the examination. Uh, okay, so simply you can skip this particular section. So guys, uh, directly we will be moving to editorial section because till that in regional section, relevant articles are not there. Moreover, if you have some different edition of Hindu newspaper, maybe Chennai edition, Bangalore edition. So this particular section will be different. Now. First article that we have here, a telco double dip attempt that threatens net neutrality. We'll see this particular article for the examination. Find what has happened. It is a good article. We'll take it up. Then a cult of operational superiority from Israel to India. We'll see this particular article also for the examination. Okay. Defection business. So articles talks about that as the elections are impending in the states such as Chhattisgarh, etc. So before that, many leaders, they are just skipping, they just they are jumping the political uh, the, they are jumping the political parties then more light less sound okay so the article talks about the firecracker noise pollution etc that happens before the diwali and article says that there needs to be the need to regulate firecrackers okay here it is just talking about uh, here it is just talking about that icmr okay just uh, one minute fine so guys here it is talking about that in 2018 fine council of C, uh, CSIR, sorry, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research has come out with less noisy green crackers, okay, who are less, no, uh, who, who will lead to less pollution and noise pollution will also be less, okay, and these kind of pollution, uh, these particular kind of uh, crackers are to be adopted, but you need to understand that when we talk about crackers, okay, they are sold by large number of irregularized uh, establishments, there are in, uh, basically there are informal informal facilities factories where these crackers are being manufactured and often they don't follow these particular kind of uh, norms then article is providing noise pollution sales that okay in what area how much decibel of noise pollution is allowed and all that thing no need to go in these particular nitty gritties okay moving on in this particular direction then the canadian dream is waning we'll take this particular article also for examination okay uh, the tussle between sidra maya and dk Shiv Kumar persist, not important article for the examination, political article. Okay, then guys, moving on. Then moving on in this particular lecture, stressful lives of students in Kota. So we have seen that recently few of the students have committed suicides in the Kota because of that academic pressure. Then states in court against their governor. Okay, so we'll see this particular article for the examination. Then what are the challenges for the new Polish government? Okay, so how did the law and justice party ruled government strains relations with the European Court of Justice? I have read this entire article, but guys, uh, the article is talking about the internal political issues. For examination, no need to go too much in the detail of this particular article for our GS paper. Then moving on text and context, how the personal data of 815 million Indians got breached. This is a cache article and article talks about a recent development. Now guys, just listen very carefully, uh, see this particular thing, what has happened, fine, I hope it is visible, okay, so recently, so recently what has happened, a cyber security company, an American cyber security company, fine, Res security, it has come out with this particular thing, that personal data of 815 million Indian citizens 
वॉज बींग सोल्ड ऑन डार्क नेट वॉज बींग सोल्ड ऑन डार्क वेब एंड दिस पर्सनल डेटा कंटेन्स द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द आधार नंबर पासपोर्ट डिटेल्स ऑफ द सिटीजन एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा अकॉर्डिंग टू देम दे हैव स्टोलन फ्रॉम आई सी एम आर इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ मेडिकल रिसर्च ओके नाउ अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग नाउ एज वी टॉक अबाउट दीज पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल्स दे कैन बी यूज इन आवर जी एस पेपर नंबर थ्री साइबर सिक्योरिटी वी सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट एज एज वी आर डिजिटाइजिंग द डेटा there are cyber risks that come with that particular thing for example recently 815 million citizens data is being stolen on the dark web now uh, further article talks about that okay uh, how secure is the data how they stole in that particular data that details are provided you can use this particular thing as an example okay then moving on in this particular direction uh, india bhutan to discuss new routes for regional connectivity we'll take this particular article for the examination okay then further moving on after that uh, house panel adopts reports on new criminal law bill then this is the assembly poll page fine um, it just contains the political articles fine no need to go too much in detail in this particular article okay then further moving on in this particular direction odd even vehicle rotation schemes to return in delhi so as winter pollution problem becomes a concern in delhi we have seen from the past few years that odd even rule is applied where uh, on selected days only odd number cars will be allowed to ply on other days even number cars can ply okay so this is a way to come then quads ipmda will take this particular article also for the examination israeli forces cut off north gaza as a toll passes 10000 now every day guys no need to track this hamas israel issue that is going on fine then further moving on in this particular direction uh, blinken wraps up west asia tour with limited success free gains pose medium term fiscal risk we'll take this particular article for examination then guys after that uh, merge g20 presidency outcome with indian policy process okay then we have uh, the corporate issues that we have here then guys moving on the sports page is there and in last we have science page and in science page today we have this article sikkim's flood wake a trail of hazard lie in wait we will take this particular article for gs paper number 3 disaster management okay so this is about overview of newspaper articles and now let's discuss all relevant articles one by one in detail now guys uh, as i've told you that you can download these explainer notes from our telegram channel link for telegram is given in the description box in youtube okay link for the telegram is given in description box in youtube now today we are going to take the quotation from today we are going to take quotation from gloria fluxa thainman okay so gloria fluxa thainman provides this particular thing the ocean and nature the ocean and the ocean and nature can live without us but humanity cannot live without nature okay so nature does not needs a human and when we talk about that we are saving the earth we are saving the earth we actually are saving ourselves so for human well being for human sustainability for human longevity okay nature environment is to be conserved okay nature does not needs human human needs the nature this particular realization can make policy efforts can can actually uh, invite more serious policy efforts towards the conservation of environment okay so that is about it fine now moving on and let's uh, uh, take the first article and guys our ethics foundation batch second batch second has already started so today will be the first class for the batch if you wish to join you can enroll in that now in the sikkim's floods wake a trail of hazard lie in wait now let's discuss this particular article first of all what will be utility of this particular article let's understand that and then we'll go in detail of this particular article so guys this particular article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 disaster management as well as environmental impacts because of climate change environment and climate change also we'll see this particular article okay now first of all guys let me tell you some basic background information and then we'll go in detail of this particular article so guys here you can see here you can see we have map of sikkim we have map of sikkim now in sikkim here we see that there is a particular lake 
एंड दिस लेक इज कॉल्ड एज द लोनाक लेक लोनाक लेक नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस लोनाक लेक इट इज अ ग्लेशियल लेक इट इज अ ग्लेशियल लेक नाउ वट इज अ ग्लेशियल लेक ग्लेशियल लेक आर द नेचुरल लेक्स विच आर फेड बाय सम मेल्टिंग ग्लेशियर नाउ इफ आई शो यू द पिक्चर ऑल्सो हेयर इफ आई शो यू द पिक्चर ऑल्सो नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक इज द लोनाक लेक दैट आई हैव शोन यू इन द मैप नाउ वॉटर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक इज कमिंग एज द ग्लेशियर इज मेल्टिंग नाउ रिसेंटली वट हैपेंड रिसेंटली वट हैपेंड दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक गॉट फेल्ड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट विद इन फ्यू मिनट्स ऑफ टाइम millions and millions of liter drained liters of water drained out of this particular lake and you can see the picture before and after you can see the picture before and after okay even the area of this particular lake has got shrunk because so much of water has seeped out of this particular lake now first of all let's understand that uh, how these particular lakes fail and what is the implication of such kind of a lake failure okay basically basically guys i have explained you this earlier also but let's revise it so suppose this is a glacier suppose this is a glacier now as this glacier will be melting as this particular glacier will be melting what will happen the water that will be released out of it it will be collected in some natural structures natural structures and this particular structure will then become a glacial lake for example this lonak lake is a glacial lake now what happens sometimes because of certain phenomena there will be excessive water that will come in this particular lake now how excessive water can come in this particular lake reason number 1 cloud burst can be there okay some cloud burst happen and within very less time a lot of water came and as lot of water will came this particular lake will fail this particular lake will fail the structure that was bounding this particular lake will fail secondly what can happen excessive rainfall some earthquake there can be some earthquake because of that earthquake also the lake can fail and in if this particular lake fails the water that will flood it will be called as glacial lake outburst flood glacial lake outburst flood means a flood that has happened because of the outburst of a glacial lake so recently what has happened this particular this particular lonak lake lonak lake got failed and a glof glacial lake outburst flood event happened in sikkim because of this because of this glacial lake outburst flood what happened there was large number of people who died a lot of property was lost and very important hydro power hydro power plants they also got damaged for example what happened as this glacial lake outburst flood happened in the lonak lake Sikkim's biggest hydro power project, that is Tista Three, it got damaged. As Tista Three got damaged, what happened? Water that was contained in the reservoir of Tista Three, that water also got released, and that further complicated the problem. Further downstream, Tista Tista Five, it got damaged, and Tista Six. These are the different different hydro power projects. All have got failed. All have got failed because of the excessive water that came because of this. glacial lake outburst flood in the lonak lake in the lonak lake now guys when we talk about this lonak lake this lonak lake happens to be the largest it happens to be uh, okay when we talk about the lonak lake it is one of the largest and fastest growing glacial lake in sikkim and for so many of the years this particular thing was this particular thing was estimated that this particular lake could be failed and if this particular lake fails then there is going to be such a kind of a catastrophe and what happened and what happened in on october 3 on october 3 night this particular lake actually got failed this lake actually got failed okay now guys understand this particular thing understand this particular thing that what are the reasons that this particular lake got failed now according to the satellite data according to satellite data it is said that there is a slope failure okay one of a one of a for example this is a lake one of a slope basically got failed it says that there was a moraine that failed what is a moraine a mass of debris and rocks okay so as i told you these are the natural lakes so these natural lakes are bounded with kind of a natural structures where silt boulders rocks they keep the lake intact and one of one of that slip got failed and therefore the water drained out of this particular lake 
now it has been provided by the national disaster management authority that there might have been excess rainfall or there might have been cloud burst which precipitated which facilitated the failure of this particular lake okay so this is something or some of the researchers are also saying that even there might be a kind of an earthquake that have come in the upper reaches of sikkim and because of that because of this this particular lake has got failed now when we talk about these particular kind of a these particular kind of a things that are happening it becomes concerning because life and property that gets damaged now guys we have seen that lake got that glacial lake got failed on that much of direct human control was not there but you see this particular crisis got exacerbated because all some other, because because what happened as i told you that as this lake got failed tista 3 dam got damaged from there a lot of water released then tista 5 got damaged from there a lot of water released tista 6 got damaged from there also the water was released because of this what happened this particular event become even more deadly and it has been provided that developing such big hydro power projects in the vicinity of this particular region was always a bad decision and from a very long period of time citizens were even protesting that such kind of structures should not be built in this particular region such kind of structures should not be built in this particular region for example citizens are protesting from last 15 years decade and a half that such hydro power project should not be built but nobody heard that and this happened now further further guys it has been provided that this crisis is not over why crisis is not over see now let's go back to the map and let's focus on this particular map listen so basically guys we have seen that here there is particular lake this entire is the lonak river now as this particular lake has failed as this particular lake has failed it has carried a lot of silt it has carried lot of silt lot of rocks lot of debris okay lot of silt rock debris along with it and because of this what had happened because of this what had happened a lot of such sediments have got deposited in this particular river's course and if you see here there are these dams here these are these dams for example now what will happen next year or when the river water will flow all that silt rocks etc they will come and they will get deposited in the dam and because of that the capacity of that particular dam will get reduced listen this hydro power project has hydro power projects or hydro power reservoirs they always had this one particular problem that as as the river will come river will bring a lot of silt and over a period of time there is so much silt that get deposited in this hydro power project that their capacity gets reduced and now this particular debris etc all will be carried in that dam and these particular dams will be negatively impacted is it clear or not so isro isro says that a large deposit of sediments and several landslides along the path of flood fine will pose a threat to downstream areas in the future and hydro power related dams their capacity will be reduced so guys we need to now what what kind of lesson we learn from this we learn a lesson from this thing that first of all this event has not happened completely in isolation what does it means see over the years because of the because of the global warming to a certain extent glacial melt has got accelerated and as glacial melt got accelerated these particular lake failures are happening and this is not only the first time that such incident has happened multiple such incidents happened in the past for example two years back in uttarakhand there was a glacial lake outburst flood in which the regions around the chamoli district of uttarakhand they got impacted now sikkim is there and many such other events might also happen in the future in the himalayan regions so anthropological reasons are indirectly responsible and secondly because of this unsustainable infrastructure that is carried these crises they get exacerbated so government needs to take some immediate steps in this particular direction that is all guys about it and now moving to the next article india bhutan to discuss new routes of regional connectivity okay let's discuss this particular article first of all guys before going on in this particular article what is utility of this article let's take that and then we'll take some background so this particular article will see with respect to gs paper number 2 gs paper number 
international relations and with that neighborhood the relations with the neighborhood countries we are going to see one thing secondly guys uh, this little bit of a background i have told you it earlier also but let's revise it again if you have watched it and if you have not watched it then please be very careful so basically basically guys what has happened recently a big development happened between bhutan and china so here you see china and here you can see bhutan now when we talk about bhutan and china they share a they share a long boundary and this particular boundary is disputed at many areas it is disputed at many areas and these are certain areas which are disputed between the bhutan and china to resolve these particular boundary disputes already 24 round of boundary talks have happened 24 round of boundary talks have happened between bhutan and china but their dispute has not got resolved up till now and because of this particular thing because of this particular thing bhutan and china they also have scrapped their diplomatic relation okay fine they don't have the diplomatic relations between them now what has happened now what has happened there is the 25th round of 25th round of boundary talks that got started between china and bhutan and in this 25th round of boundary talk china and bhutan have signed a memorandum of understanding and as per this memorandum of understanding they have decided that a technical team technical team will be constituted this particular technical team will visit the ground and will try to delineate will try to will try to solve this boundary problem and they also have decided that they will open up their uh, diplomatic relations which were suspended earlier this is something that has happened between china and bhutan now understand this particular thing guys that any closeness of bhutan with the china is always a concern for the india why it is a concern for india because guys here because if you come here, if you come here, we find that there is this Doklam. Fine, we have Doklam plateau here. Now, when we talk about Doklam, okay, so if I just, no, so here there is the Doklam. Now, Doklam region lies in the vicinity of Siligudi corridor, lies in the vicinity of the Siligudi corridor of India, chicken neck of India. Now, this particular region, this particular, now if you see this particular stretch, this particular stretch, it connects India with the, it connects mainland India with Northeast. It connects the mainland India with the Northeast. And China always wants, always want to have a favorable location here. So that tomorrow if China wants, China can hold a strategic card in their hands. Okay. Now, if you see, if you see guys, this particular Doklam region, China tried to, took over the Doklam region in 2017. Okay, at that point of a time, India intervened in between, India intervened in between. Now, guys, understand this particular thing from time to time, what China has done, China has given the proposal to Bhutan. What is this proposal? Proposal is this, China says that you give us this Doklam region, you give us this Doklam region and in exchange, China says that Bhutan will be given some extra territory in the northern region. They will be given, okay, in the, in the northern region, they will be given some extra territory. They want to do this boundary swap or this territory swap with Bhutan. India is very sensitive on this particular matter. Because if in this Doklam region, China will come, I told you that then it will, there will be the implications for the Siliguri corridor of India. So therefore, India is always concerned whenever the Bhutan is having any talks with the China. And now as this, that this 25th round of boundary talks has happened, again, India's strategic concerns have come to the limelight okay have come to the front now guys because of this particular thing happened now what has happened bhutanese king bhutan's king has visited india and he is visiting india for two purposes purpose number one that he just want to uh, ally the fears of india that bhutan will not let use their territory for the chinese interest and second bhutan is there in india for economic reason also bhutan is looking forward to develop a special economic zone fine in the Galefu region and for that they want investment and therefore they have come the Bhutanese king has come to India okay so as Bhutanese king has come to India some of the memorandum of understanding have been signed with India certain deals have been signed with India so now let's see what development has happened between India and Bhutan so guys this is entire background I hope that you have understood it
Okay, I hope that you have understood it. Then, now, moving on in this particular direction. Moving on in this particular direction. So basically, Bhutan and India both have decided, both have decided that they are going to start the new routes of regional connectivity. They have start, they are going to start with the new routes of regional connectivity. And they will upgrade the border and immigration post. Border and immigration post. So, uh, I'll talk on this immigration post and border also. Just understand this particular thing. When we talk about Bhutan, Bhutan is looking forward, number one, to develop a smart city in Galefu. Now, Galefu is in Bhutan. So, they want to develop a smart city at Galefu. Okay, one thing. Secondly, Bhutan is also looking forward. Bhutan is also looking forward to develop a special economic zone at the Sarpang. That is a Sarpang district special economic zone. Okay. So, they want to develop Galefu as a smart city, number one. Number two, they want to develop a special economic zone at Sarpang. That is a Sarpang special economic zone. And for that, they want assistance from India. They want assistance from India. Thirdly, thirdly, what Bhutan is do, uh, what Bhutan is further looking to? Bhutan wants to connect with the India through the railway. And for that particular thing, a 58 kilometer railway line is being is being deployed between Golefu. Okay, already we have seen this particular Golefu where they are making smart city and Kokra in Assam. So Kokra in Assam and Golefu in Bhutan. They are to be connected by this 58 kilometer railway line. And also, they want to connect the Samse in Bhutan with the Banarhat in West Bengal. Okay. So, for these connectivity projects, Bhutan needs India's technical assistance and Bhutan needs investment from the India, as well as for this special economic zone. For this, they have come to India. For this, the Bhutanese king has come to India. Moreover, guys, understand this particular thing. Let's see. Now, you see this thing. You see this particular thing that here, here you have Bhutan, here you have Bhutan. Now, if we see Bhutan, we know this particular thing that the Bhutan has no boundary, uh, Bhutan has no, uh, Bhutan has no uh, um, sea connectivity. And for getting the sea connectivity, Bhutan wants to have a transit in Bangladesh. Bhutan wants to have a transit in Bangladesh. And for that particular thing, for that particular thing, what Bhutan is looking forward, okay, Bhutan wants to flow their trade items in West Bengal and from West Bengal, they want to reach to Bangladesh, okay. And India has allowed it, India has allowed it also that Bhutan can enter the West Bengal and from West Bengal, they can enter the Bangladesh. So, this transit agreement, transit approval has also been given to Bhutan by India, okay. Now guys, when we talk about India, when we talk about India, India in the past also have supported Bhutan, okay. For example, India has given the assistance to Bhutan for their 12th 5-year plan. Also, India has agreed that for their 13th 5-year plan, now their 12th 5-year plan is between 2018 to 2023 and after 2023, their uh, 13th 5-year plan is going to start. So there also, India will give assistance to Bhutan, okay. Now, when we talk about Bhutan, Bhutan's economy has got impacted in the past, particularly because of the COVID-19 pandemic, because tourism was suspended. Secondly, guys, when we talk about the Bhutan, we find this particular thing that there is a net out migration of the youth from Bhutan that is happening. So, the youth of Bhutan, they are going to other countries for studies, for employment. Okay. And at the same time, if we see the public debt of the Bhutan has also increased, their public debt is 125% of their GDP. So, their GDP is 100 rupees. Their public debt is 125 rupees. Their forex reserve is also going down. So, Bhutan needs India's assistance, economic assistance, so that they can come over their economic crisis. And there, this visit has happened in India. Okay, and guys, during this particular visit, much discussion has not happened with respect to China-Bhutan deal. Much discussion has not happened, but this is well understood and this is well expected that Bhutan is going to keep in mind that India's India's concerns that are there. Okay, that is all guys about it. I hope that you have understood it. Okay. Uh, now let's take some of the doubts that are there. Okay, one doubt is there, sir. Can you please suggest which is the best current affair magazine? Okay. 
guys understand this thing if there would have been one best current affair magazine everybody would be reading that and the problem would have been solved life would have been very much easy understand this thing no magazine is the one which you can rely with the blind eyes listen this thing first of all you need to understand that how magazines are made magazines are made from the newspapers okay UPSC institutes don't have any reporters on the ground who are going and collecting the information. What they are doing? They are just seeing what is coming in the newspapers. Every current affair magazine is actually nothing but a cut copy paste of the newspapers only. Which magazine you should choose? Fine. You should choose that particular magazine which you feel are which you feel you are more comfortable with. The font size, the size of that magazine, whatever you feel is more comfortable, you can go with that. Okay, so there will be a lot of subjectivity. One answer cannot be there. Okay, one thing. Okay, uh, uh, sir, as a beginner, I would like to know how I can start my preparation. Okay, Sehran, please, uh, uh, you can connect me with that, uh, me on the telegram because this message, uh, this is a very big thing to discuss. Okay, so I cannot tell you in one line that what you should do. So you can connect me on telegram and we can have a discussion there. Okay, I hope that every doubt is taken up here. Okay, now moving on, moving on. States in courts against the governors, against the governors. And we have one more article here. We have one more article here. Governor delaying crucial bills, a matter of concern, says Supreme Court. Let's discuss. Uh, now we have clubbed both of these two articles together and we'll see this particular article. Now this particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number two, issues related to polity. GS paper number two issues related to polity. First of all, let me tell you some basic background that has happened. And guys, if you remember, just a few days back, we have discussed this particular article in lot more detail also. What actually has happened? Basically, guys, there is a sign within GS paper number two in the federal disputes. You can see this particular article. Disputes on federalism. Federal disputes. Okay. Now, basically, guys, what has happened? States which are ruled by non-BGP governments, okay, these particular states have come out with this particular contention that they are passing a bill and that particular bill is not being cleared by the governor. And governor is weaponizing it, governor is weaponizing their constitutional position. Okay. And what has happened in this capacity, multiple state governments has approached the Supreme Court. For example, recently what has happened, Tamil Nadu government. Recently, what has happened? Tamil Nadu government had said that they have passed many bills covering public health, higher education, loka yukta, cooperative societies. Okay, these bills have been given to governor, but governor has not given the approval. Okay, it has been said that governor is positioning himself as a political rival. Because now see this particular thing. When we talk about the governor, governor is appointed by a president, or in a way, government is appointed by the concurrence of the central government. Okay, and therefore, many times the state government says that governor is actually the agent of the center. Okay, and when the government at center will be different and government in a state will be different. Center government uses the position of a governor to stall the developmental work in the states. And this is something that is being done. So, therefore, largely the states which have a problem with the governor, these are the non-BJP states. Okay, Kerala, okay, one is Tamil Nadu, one is Tamil Nadu who have said this particular thing that governor is not clearing the bill. Then Kerala also has filed a petition in Supreme Court. Okay. And Kerala also saying this particular thing that governor for years have not cleared the bills. For years have not cleared the bill. Then Punjab also have said the same thing. So we have example of Punjab, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and even Tilangana. Tilangana government has provided the same thing also. And Tilangana government also actually the Supreme Court in September 22. And then Supreme Court send a reminder to the governor that it is governor's responsibility that governor should not keep the bill pending for, for a lot of time. Governor should clear the bill as far as possible. Okay. Now, when we talk about the, uh, the constitutional provision, we need to see Article 200 in this context. When we talk about Article 200, Article 200 provides that whenever the state assembly clears a bill, and sends a bill to governor. Governor has a few options under Article 200. What are these options? Option number one, 
गवर्नर कैन गिव द असेंड टू द बिल एंड देन दैट पर्टिकुलर बिल विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू द एक्ट नंबर वन ऑप्शन नंबर टू गवर्नर कैन विद होल्ड द एसेंट गवर्नर विल नॉट गिव द एसेंट गवर्नर कैन विद होल्ड द एसेंट थ्री रिजर्व द बिल फॉर द रिकन्सिडरेशन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट फाइन इफ ही इफ गवर्नर थिंग्स दैट द बिल डेरोगेट्स और एंडेंजर द पावर ऑफ जुडिशियल रिव्यू ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट और इफ द बिल विल हैव सर्टन इम्प्लीकेशन ऑन द फेडरल प्रोविजन गवर्नर कैन रिजर्व द बिल फॉर द प्रेजिडेंट्स कंसिडरेशन ओके नाउ basically giving assent not a big problem reserving the bill for president also is not that much problematic but problematic is that when governor is not giving the assent now it has been provided now it has been provided that governor can choose to withhold the assent when uh, sorry whenever the government chooses to withhold the assent that okay i'll not give the approval in that matter he should return the bill as soon as possible he should return the bill as soon as possible to the assembly because now see if assembly will Uh, should return the bill as soon as uh, possible back to the assembly okay now guys in this particular capacity in this particular capacity there have been certain uh, views of the members of the constituent assembly and when you are writing your answers in the gs paper number 2 always quoting the views of the constituent assembly member is actually a good thing fine it gives get, get, uh, it helps you to get good marks now here dr b r ambedkar Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in the Constituent Assembly said that in a responsible government there can be no room for the governor acting on discretion. Governor cannot decide on his own that I will not give the assent. Fine. Secondly, even T. T. Krishnam Chari, who later became Finance Minister and was a member of a Constituent Assembly, he also said this particular thing that governor cannot act on his own. That okay, I will not give that. Fine. Many times governor is not giving the assent. Governor cannot act on his own. If assent is to be withhold that is with that will be suggested by the state government governor cannot act on his own and mr tt krishnamachari he provided this particular thing he provided this particular thing that if the bill is passed by the legislative assembly and after bill has been passed by legislative assembly then some modification is needed in the bill or if some public pressure has developed public does not want that that particular bill should go forward then the government the elected government uses the governor to return the bill that okay you please return the bill to us don't give the assent so withholding the assent will also be will also be used when the gover state government will say governor in his own individual capacity cannot do that particular thing and also we have judgments also for example we have shamsher singh case we have shamsher singh case in shamsher singh case it was provided that governor exercises all his power under the constitution on the basis of aid and advice of the council of minister so when the governor is withholding the assent not giving the assent that advice also is to be given by the state council of minister okay in independent capacity they cannot act moreover moreover it has also been provided that in kesham meghchandra singh case in kesham meghchandra singh case it was provided that if governor has if governor is not given the assent to the bill then governor should return the bill and that particular bill should be returned in the reasonable time now what is reasonable time as per kesham meghchandra case that reasonable time is 3 months that reasonable time comes to 3 months reasonable time comes to 3 months okay so this is something that has happened now guys in the past sarkaria commission sarkaria commission's report on central state relation it has suggested that governor uh, while drafting a bill there should be the discussion with the governor and some deadline should be there within that within which the governor needs to give the assent some deadline needs to be there within which government need governor needs to give the assent is it clear or not so that is about it i hope guys that you have understood it okay and with this we come to an end to this particular article now we'll move to next article a telco double dip attempt that threatens net neutrality now this particular article we will see with respect to gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 telecom sector and related issue fine you have in gs paper number 3 infrastructure within the infrastructure telecom sector and related issues can come so there we are going to see this particular article now first of all let me give you some basic background because if you don't know that background understanding this article at your own might be little bit problematic okay so basically what has happened recently try 
टेलीकॉम रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया हैज हेल्ड अ कंसल्टेशन हैज हेल्ड अ कंसल्टेशन ओके विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द रेगुलेशन ऑफ ओ टी टी ओ टी टी कॉम्युनिकेशन प्लेटफॉर्म ओ टी टी कॉम्युनिकेशन प्लेटफॉर्म लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंटायर डेवलपमेंट ओके बेसिकली द प्रॉब्लम इज लिटल बिट ओल्ड वट इज दिस प्रॉब्लम सी टेलीकॉम ऑपरेटर्स ओके वी हैव वन पार्टी दैट इज टेलीकॉम ऑपरेटर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ टेलीकॉम ऑपरेटर इज एयरटेल एयरटेल वोडाफोन लेट्स ए एयरटेल वोडाफोन जियो दीज आर द टेलीकॉम ऑपरेटर्स नाउ टेलीकॉम ऑपरेटर से इज दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट आवर रेवेन्यू आवर रेवेन्यू कम्स फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द कॉल चार्जेस ओके एंड ऑल सच काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग नाउ वट हैज हैपेंड ओ टी टी कॉम्युनिकेशन प्लेटफॉर्म हैव इमर्ज वट आर द ओ टी टी कॉम्युनिकेशन प्लेटफॉर्म व्हाट्सएप ओके यू हैव व्हाट्सएप you have telegram okay you have facebook messenger today what you can do you need not to call a person using your mobile okay <laughs> you will use mobile but you need not to call a person using the per minute um, using the telecom services but simply on internet you can make a call by using whatsapp to a person okay now these telecom companies they say that because people are able to call on whatsapp people are able to call on zoom people are able to call on uh, uh, telegram these telecom companies are losing a lot of revenue they are losing a lot of revenue these telecom companies says that we we pay so many charges for licensing we pay spectrum charges these whatsapp telecom etc neither they need license nor they are paying any kind of a spectrum charges and they are giving the telecommunication services to people and people are using them and our revenues have got declined so there should be some level playing field there should be some level playing field these were the grievances of these telecom operators against these ott communication platforms such as whatsapp messenger such as telecom messengers facebook messenger etc now what has happened recently telecom regulatory authority of india trai telecom regulatory authority of india it has invited a consultation on the need of mechanism for regulation of ott services how these ott platforms such as whatsapp etc okay understand guys these in ott one are the streaming platform that is netflix amazon prime and one are the communication platforms in communication platform we have these whatsapp etc okay so they have opened up a consultation paper that how they can be opened up now it has been said now it has been said uh, that it might lead to erosion of net neutrality how we'll discuss it in just a minute see this particular thing what are the grievances of the telecom companies they say they say that they are competing they are competing with ott whose services are often free they say that these telecom operators they have to invest heavily in upgrading their infrastructure they have to deploy the towers and all such kind of a things but all the fun is being taken by these ott companies okay now it has been said that these telecom company says that these ott platforms are the free riders they are benefiting from the infrastructure that has been built by telecom operators reliance airtel they are deploying the they are deploying the towers and those particular towers they are being used, uh, those particular they are deploying the towers they are investing crores and crores of money in that okay but they are not getting they are not getting return on that okay now basically it has been said that actually these particular arguments are not correct there are criticisms of these arguments given by the telecom companies what are the problems understand this thing first of first of all when we talk about the telecom companies telecom companies do not own the internet and they cannot say that we will decide that who will use internet in what capacity okay they say that basically consumers are paying the money to telecom companies and you see as whatsapp has come as a telegram has come as these ott platforms have come the internet consumption has increased and as internet consumption has increased increased consumers what are doing consumers what are doing consumers are actually paying money to telecom companies for buying the data packs today telecom companies are earning a lot of money by selling the data packs okay without internet can whatsapp be operative no without internet can telegram be operative no okay for that you need data and for data you need to depend on telecom companies and when you buy data from telecom companies money they will get the money 
So this is something that it has been provided. Okay. So moreover, moreover, it is also being provided that if telecom companies are facing the losses, telecom companies can increase their tariffs. So rather than pinning all the blame on the OTT platforms, they can they can raise the revenue by increasing the charges. They can say this particular thing. Now it has been provided that the principle of net neutrality will be impacted. Principle of net neutrality will be impacted by any regulation of the OTT platforms. Now what is net neutrality? Basically guys, net neutrality as a concept was developed by Professor Tim Wu of Columbia Law School. Net neutrality means, net neutrality, it is the principle that internet access providers must treat all traffic originating from and terminating to internet in the same way. There, all internet traffic should be used in the same way. Now, WhatsApp on them some additional riders, some additional safeguards, some additional obligations cannot be imposed because all data of internet needs to be same, treated the same. Now, you are saying that on OTT platforms, we are going to put more conditionalities. It will go against the principle of net neutrality. So, therefore, therefore, this might become a wrong precedent. This is, guys, this entire issue. I hope that you have understood it. Now, we'll move to next article. The cult of operational superiority from Israel to India. Now, guys, uh, I have provided the notes of this particular article, but frankly speaking, article does not contain that much substance. It is just giving one particular dimension that I will discuss with you. Now, you see this particular thing. What happened recently? Recently, what happened? On October 7th, Hamas carried a surprise attack on Israel. Carried a surprise attack on Israel where large number of people were died. They were killed. Then Israel have started their counter-offensive on Hamas and thousands of people have been killed in Gaza also. Now, article says that this particular attack by Hamas on Israel, it teaches us many lessons. It teaches us many lessons. Now, what lessons it teaches us? Let's understand this particular thing. It says that when we talk about Israel, Israel from so many of the years was managing the Hamas. It, is, was, it was not solving the problem of Palestinian res, uh, resistance. It was not solving the problem of terrorists that were living in the Gaza. It was not solving the problem of Hamas. It was just managing it. Okay. Though Israel is of no match to uh, Hamas, Israel is, will, will overpower the Hamas, will, uh, will eliminate the Hamas, let's say, from the earth. But they say this particular thing, that what has happened, this attack by Hamas on Israel, it has shown many vulnerabilities that are there in Israel. Okay. And we can learn one lesson, that even, the, if, even if the enemy is weak, but if enemy is highly resolved, then that enemy can inflict a lot of physical harm. And though national dislocation will not happen, but a lot of physical harm can be done by that particular enemy. This lesson we learn from the Hamas's attack on Israel. And this article says that India should also keep this particular thing in mind. Now we see that we are treating Pakistan as an irritant, as an irritant. Okay. Tomorrow, Pakistan can also do the similar kind of a thing as Hamas did with Israel. Okay. So basically, it has been said that see, India has procured many of the new technologies, new missiles, such as the Spice missile, smart, precise, impact, cost effective missiles. We have invested a lot in our punitive capabilities, but at the same time, any surprise attack by Pakistan can lead to a lot of lot of physical and lot of lot of damages to India. So India should learn this particular lessons and should should keep this thing in mind and should have the should have what India is going to do. So this is something that has been provided in this particular article. Nothing much. Okay. Moving to this next article, the Canadian dream is not worth winning. Now, this article we'll see with respect to GS paper number 2, India-Canada relations. India-Canada relations. So, guys, uh, we have discussed this particular development also multiple number of times. What has happened? Recently, Canadian Prime Minister made certain unsubstantiated allegations on India that India has played a role in killing of a Khalistani leader in Canada. Now, because of this particular thing, relations between both the countries have declined. and also, the visas, uh, also basically, uh, because of this particular thing, there is people-to-people -people ties that are there between India and Canada, they will, get, they will be getting disrupted. Now, 
सम फैक्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू प्लीज नीड टू नो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट कैनेडा कैनेडा इज होम टू वन पॉइंट थ्री मिलियन इंडियंस फोर परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ कैनेडा एज पर दैनेडियन सेंसो टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन फोर परसेंट ऑफ कैनेडाज पॉपुलेशन इज मेड अप ऑफ इंडियंस ओके एंड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट पीरियड बिटवीन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स टीन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन दिस पीरियड वॉज द पीरियड वेन रिकॉर्ड नंबर ऑफ इंडियंस बिकेम द परमानेंट रेजिडेंस इन कैनेडा सो मोर देन वन लैख एटीन थाउजेंड इंडियंस बिकेम द परमानेंट रेजिडेंट इन कैनेडा ओके देर नंबर इंक्रीज टू वन लैख एटीन थाउजेंड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ओके सेकेंडली वी सी दैट लार्ज नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो आर देयर इन दैनेडा ओके नीड नॉट टू गेट कंफ्यूज सो सो पर इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दीज आर द नंबर ऑफ इंडियंस हु हैव बिकम द परमानेंट रेजिडेंट now guys when we talk about indian students for indian students also canada is one of a very popular destination when we talk about guys recent as this particular relation got strained what happened india gave an advisory to citizens that who are traveling to canada they should be cautious they should be cautious now because of this particular thing young indian students who have went to canada a lot of anxiety has developed in their mind particularly the students who have secured admission in 2022 or have got the admission in 2023 session for them lot of anxieties have increased though educational institutions are canada are saying that you are safe here but these anxieties have increased now article says this particular thing that see as students are going to canada this is a win win relation win win situation for both in 2020 international students contributed 22.3 billion canadian dollar to canada okay this is a huge so therefore canada wants to invite the foreign students and secondly students also when they go there they find they find it a way to secure high paying jobs to settle in abroad they also see it as a they they also see it as a kind of an opportunity so they find that by settling abroad they might get better career opportunities better income opportunities okay even they might get citizenship there so this is the reason that they are going there so both the countries need to resolve it in an amicable manner so that this particular issue does not become does not has any collateral damage on students who are going to canada so this is this entire article's message okay i hope that you have understood it and now moving to next article quads ipmda initiative proof of our commitment to a free indo pacific okay so basically guys here we see that this is an a kind of a basically here the views of एडमिरल आर हरी कुमार एडमिरल फाइन मिस्टर आर हरी कुमार हैज बिन गिवन नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एंटायर आर्टिकल वी नीड टू सी दैट वट इज दिस आई पी एम डी ए इनिशियटिव ऑफ क्वाड्रिलेटरल सिक्योरिटी डायलॉग ओके सो बेसिकली आई आई पी एम डी ए आई पी एम डी ए इट स्टैंड फॉर इंडो पैसेफिक मैरी टाइम डोमेन अवेयरनेस इनिशियटिव इट स्टैंड फॉर indo pacific maritime domain awareness initiative now this particular initiative was announced by the quad countries quad stands for quadrilateral security dialogue it is a grouping between four countries that is india usa australia and japan so quad countries in the tokyo summit in 2022 tokyo summit in 2022 launched the ipmda indo pacific maritime domain awareness what is this particular initiative under this particular initiative all these four countries will jointly monitor indo pacific region will exchange information about the indo pacific region and will also share the situational awareness with each other so they want to track dark shipping they want to track dark shipping now what is the dark shipping basically dark ships are those ships which have switched off their uh, automatic identification systems these ships cannot be tracked okay these ships operate off the radar and many number of a times these ships are used to transport the illegal migrants they are used to transport the illegal goods and for smuggling and for piracy often these ships are used so to track the dark shipping to build a faster wider and accurate maritime picture fine of the indo pacific region okay and to ensure the safety and stability in the pacific island southeast asia and indian ocean region all the four countries will jointly monitor them will exchange the information and will and will exchange the maritime awareness situation for that 
this IPMD initiative was launched in 2022 Tokyo summit in Quad. And this is an example of Quad cooperation that has emerged between the countries. Further, also Indian Navy is modernizing itself and it aims to have 170 to 180 ships and submarines by 2028. Why? Because today we see that a lot of geostrategic concerns have come. On one hand, Russia-Ukraine war is there. Then on, then we find that the China has become assertive. Then we see in West Asia war has opened up. So India needs to, India needs to have a, India needs to, uh, India needs to have a versatile naval force. And for that, all these particular things are being done by India. India is making the allies. India is upgrading its infrastructure. India is upgrading its um, it, it, its naval ships fine so this is all what has been there in this particular article okay free grains pose medium term fiscal risk can spur competitive populism okay uh, now guys first you need to understand this particular thing first background you need to understand basically guys we have one particular scheme national food security act 2013 under national food security act there are the priority households priority households Priority households are given subsidized food grains. 5 kg food grain per person will be given at subsidized price as per National Food Security Act. Listen. 3 rupees kg. 3 rupees kg rice will be provided. 2 rupees kg wheat will be provided. And 1 rupee kg coarse grains are provided. 5 kg per person food grains are provided under the National Food Security Act. Okay, 3 rupee, 2 rupee, 1 rupee you have to give. Now guys, what happened? What happened? Government, government came out with Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana in 2022 when the COVID pandemic started. And government said that 5 kg additional food grain will also be given. 5 kg additional food grain will also be given. And last year what happened? Last year what happened? Government suspended this Pradhan Mantri Krishi, uh, Pradhan Mantri Garib uh, Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyana Yojana and government last year provided that under National Food Security Act, this 3 rupee kg, 2 rupee kg, 3 rupee, 2 rupee, 1 rupee that they were paying, even that is not to be made. It was provided that free food grains will be provided for one year. Okay, I hope you are able to understand. Originally, NFSA provided subsidized food grain. During COVID, Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyana Yojana provided that subsidized food grain you will get, 5 kg extra you will get. Then last year government said that you will get food grains free of cost. Even 3 rupee, 2 rupee, 1 rupee is not to be paid. And for one year, this particular scheme was given. Now, guys, in extension of this, in extension of this, what has happened? Prime Minister has announced that free food grains will be provided for five years. Free food grains will be provided to five years. So what was extended for one year? It has been extended to five years. So Prime Minister announced extended the extending free food grain program by five years now economist economist at nomara uh, basically economist economist they say this particular thing that it will add to medium term fiscal pressure now guys understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about when we talk about the giving the free food grains it will cost two lakh crore rupees or 0.7 percent of india's gdp so this will be a fiscal burden that will be imposed onto the government because of this particular thing. And it might also lead to competitive populism. Now what is competitive populism? Now populism is any policy which is just announced to attract more number of people. Competitive populism means that what happened in different different state governments, different different, now as 2024 election are coming, different different political parties will announce similar kind of a schemes which will become financially unsustainable. Okay, so a competition of populism will come, which at the end of the day, will become a big problem on the finances of the nation. So this is guys about this particular article. Now point is that guys you can use these particular kind of a keywords such as competitive populism in your answers of GS3. Now let's take the mains practice question for today. The question that we have upholding the principles of net neutrality is essential to foster a conducive environment for innovation, competition and consumer welfare, especially in India. Comment. Especially in India. Comment. Okay, so this will be GS paper number uh, 3, 10 marker question. Fine, that is all guys about it. I hope that you have understood it. Okay, that is all for today. And with this, we come to an end to the today's session. 
guys i hope that all your doubts are clear okay now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then guys please take care of yourselves thank you so much